Welcome to Speaking of Service, the podcast that uncovers practical ways to grow service revenue, control costs, and improve customer satisfaction. If you're looking to innovate, gain a competitive edge, or just learn about the latest service trends, you've come to the right place. Today, Chris Wolf, VP of Strategy Partnerships, joins Marco Zeller, Director of Remote Service and IOMT at Carl Stortz to discuss how speed, cybersecurity, and compliance is crucial to keeping equipment safe and current in a constant effort to improve patient outcomes. If you've ever been able to leave the hospital with a small bandage instead of an incision and an overnight stay, there's a good chance you have Carl Stortz to thank for that. For more than 75 years, this brand has been associated with instruments that enable endoscopy or scope surgery that allow doctors to do minimally invasive procedures where in the past you might have involved a multi-day hospital stay and an incision. Uh, but that's not all that this brand does. Carl Stortz is synonymous with the superior visualization technologies and the surgical instrumentation that accompanies that that are revolutionizing the way that care is provided both to people as well as to animals. Uh, this is great for patient outcomes, for effectiveness, uh, for, for human health, animal health, but it's also great for business. Medicine is a business after all, so the availability of these life-changing, life-saving technologies are important to the, the revenue streams of the providers who use them. I'm delighted today to introduce a member of the Carl Stortz team. He's an engineer. He's a bona fide techie. He's also a patent holder. Uh, welcome to Speaking of Service, Marco. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Carl Stortz. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, I work for Stortz since um, almost 17 years and started as a software developer. and. Uh, I went to different stages at the company, from software to to Scrum Master to project management to system engineering, uh, project management, and and now ending up in the role um, as director for remote service and IOMT. Um, in my role today, I'm responsible for the the connectivity of our devices to the cloud, making sure we get the data from the devices and establishing the let's say the digital backbone for the device to the business communication um, so that we can establish new capabilities, new uh, value for our customers beside the core we have today. Well, I know your customers care tremendously about having top quality, efficient equipment that's readily available, flexible for repairs, but you have to deal with the sensitivity of equipment in a hospital setting that involves patient outcomes but also the continuity of the availability of that equipment, making sure it's always fit for duty and that the software that's involved is constantly up to date. That seems like a tremendous array of challenges to both establish the connectivity in the first place and then to provide the over-the-air updates. Tell me what a day in the life is like for your team and delivering that kind of service. It's really difficult because the, we, we sit between two chairs on the one hand, we have the, the cyber teams in the hospital and the IT guys that want to have a secure environment that want to limit the access to the machines um, from the people outside. And that's really important for the hospital and we totally see that. On the other hand, um, the products become more and more connected. And if you have connected devices, even in the OR, you have to secure those devices with patches. And so the only way to patch those units, units is to, to provide a connectivity to the cloud and establish a digital way to, to update the units. And um, this is really a challenge. Um, and it's a challenge for us because we have to convince the IT and we have to convince, let's say, our customer to take over the responsibility to, to, to install, for example, the software without the car starts technician. Um, and there is a lot of value in that approach for the customer, but we have to, to learn how to, to communicate that. Because today, if a, a car starts technician visits the customer, the, the hospital has to plan the time when the, the surgeon, the customer, the technician visits the customer. And during that time slot, they cannot execute any surgery. So this is a, a huge block 
for the for the customer. And now with the capability to do install the software without a car stock stock technician, they have the chance to plan it more easily. They can update the units easily during the day whenever there is a room available, they can update in the evening without blocking time. So that makes the life of the customer and of the, the biomet, the technician of the customer, really easier than today. Let me unpack that just a little bit. You mentioned the term biomed, which I think in Europe is a common title, but in the US, we might refer to these folks as the the technicians who are responsible for the well-being of the medical equipment that are used in a clinical setting or in an operating room. If the surgeon is the king in the OR, or arguably the anesthesiologist, the biomed or technician really has tremendous amount of authority in whether a particular device is connected or not. How do you convince these technicians to get on board with you and connect the equipment in the first place? I would say the biomed is easier to convince than the IT. Okay. Um, what we see today is uh, a change of that role. In the past, the world between biomed and IT was separated. The IT was responsible for IT equipment, PCs and so on, and the biomed for the boxes, for the devices. And now that the products, the medical products become more and more PCs, this world is more or less merging together and we can see that the biomed, biomed needs more and more IT background. And when we talk about connectivity, the biomed is easy to convince because there is a clear value for them. Less work, easier to plan, um, more transparency. That's easy and that's convincing. But on the other hand, we have the IT department with their strict rules. And so I would not say challenge, but uh, the most discussions we really face with the with the IT department, they have good questions about security, and they have good reasons why they ask certain questions. And um, the only way to convince the IT department is really by providing transparency to them, give them the ability to understand what happens between the device and the cloud, and that transparency um, helps them to do their job, make sure that only data exchange that should be exchanged. So you have the twin responsibilities of patient privacy as well as the cybersecurity of the data that's involved in that whole operation. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And we have that weird situation that we have to make sure that we, we are secure. And the only way to make our product secure is by installing the latest software so we have to connect to the cloud. That's really weird and more or less contradicting. We don't want to have connectivity, but we need the connectivity to be secure. And that's that's the challenge. And that's more or less the message we have to, to send out, that we need that to be secure and that the connectivity is not against security. It's the, the only way for security. So over-the-air updates are the most important thing that you can provide to assure your the devices you're customers are using are fit for purpose, are fit for patients, but also secured from cyber threats. How do you deliver those over-the-air updates? What are the particular challenges you face in the med tech world? I would say the biggest challenge for updates of medical equipment is the control. Again, all about control and transparency. Um, if you update a consumer device, it's easy. You update them whenever you want. You can update your Windows PC or Win Microsoft can update the Windows PC, PC whenever they want. Even if they shut down your PC while you're using it, actually, they can just shut it down. Not the big deal for you as a consumer. But in the in the medical environment, it, it would be horrible if we shut down the OR and install the software. So our biggest challenge is, let's say, the safety uh, during a software update. So how can we install the latest software on a machine uh, without breaking the safety of the of the device of the system and so at the moment we, we decided to go the safe way by let's say hand over the the responsibility to trigger the installation to the to the biomet so they still have to go to the OR and 
trigger the button. But with that approach, we, like I said, we hand over the control to the to the biomats, and they have the chance to verify, okay, this OR is not in use, and it's safe to update the, the OR. That's one piece. And the second piece is we really have to make sure that the software fits to the unit. So we heard a lot of challenges in the consumer areas where smartphones are updated and then somehow they have problems and that's not possible in the medical area. All the software updates have to be verified, have to be be proof that they work on a specific version of the unit. And so before we can ship a software to the customer, there is a huge process to make sure that the software works on the defined version, on the defined version of the hardware and we do not break anything if we update the box to a newer version. That's a tremendous number of variables that are involved in making sure that the right software is on the right machine at the right time, approved by the right person. How do you keep track of that sprawling amount of data and all the different ways that that could go wrong? The key element to everything is to eliminate the human factor of within the whole process. Uh, wherever a human is involved, there is a risk of making mistakes. Um, so the goal is really to automate as much as possible. So we started to automate the whole chain from a final release to, to the deployment to the unit. So controlling where the software is rolled out, in which region, in which country, do we have the registration or not for that software in that area? So that's one piece, really automate as much as possible. It's a journey for us, but we are on that journey and it's a key element. It does not only reduce the resources, the people we need to, to deploy a new software, it really makes that secure and safe, really reducing the mistake. And on the other side, the reporting back, the tracking of the software changes is also a piece that has to be automated. So in the past, when the technician went out, they have to fill out papers to track the stuff. The biomats have to fill out papers. And with the digital connectivity of our devices to the cloud, we have the chance to automatically collect the information about the units and track those changes in the device history record. So we really know when that unit, rece unit received the software, at which time really a, a tracking of all the changes. And so we fulfill our tracking requirements from the legal aspects and the um, standard aspects and make sure we we really understand how how our installed base work, works out in the field and where we may have to push a little bit harder to get the latest version out and installed on the units. When I visited the Carl Stortz website to learn a little bit more about your company, I saw that service is now an important branded offering right up alongside you know, the human instruments and the animal instruments. Tell me about getting service provided as a branded offering by the company. When did that begin? And then when did your team enter the picture to start providing you know, over-the-air software controlled devices as part of the service offering? Internally, we had the discussion of service as a product since a long time. And um, I would say the last seven to eight years, we really start to, to build these this capabilities. And now the last years, we really defined um, solid goals for that activity to build service as a value. Because service is more than just repairing units. Service is, is a part of the customer experience, the, the customer satisfaction. And that's one key element of that whole whole move um, to provide service as a product, really customer satisfaction and uh, really make them happy, increase the efficiency of the of the products and the equipment, make sure that the customer has a great experience with the product from the first day to the last day. And with the last day have the has the opportunity to to move to the next generation of our products. That's the story about service and Talking about technology and the remote service and IoT story, we work on that since, um, I would say, 10 years to really build the base. It's really important to have a, a solid concept and a solid um, infrastructure to, to maintain that globally. And 
all the activities we have today in, in my team is really to make sure that our latest products support this connectivity. And what we see today is the starting point. Software is a, a low hanging but important food and the key element for everything. But we are again on a journey and the last 10 years was were just the beginning. And we will see a huge, um, let's say, increase of the performance in the next years. What are the goals and the metrics that you use to measure the success of that, that initiative you have? One key element is the, the tracking capability. How many units can we track with remote service? So really get, get rid of the manual process to the digital process. This is one, one uh, measurement where we identify, okay, how good we are with the connectivity and with remote service. The second thing is, or are the costs for, for the software maintenance. Um, at the moment, the costs are really high because sending out technicians and sales is a, a huge effort. And so if we can reduce those costs, we, we have a huge value. And, and finally, but not so easy to measure, it's also the, the ecological part. So how much energy can we save if you have not to send out the technicians to a customer. Um, that's also one key element. Looking around in our environment and understand that, that uh, let's say, green service is a key element for the future to save our planet um, is another aspect. But like I said, that's not so easy to track. But there are elements of that that, have a, that's our, that are part of our goal. How are you using PTC software technology to enable all of these goals? So PTC offers the Thingworks platform. That's our IoT platform. And it's the back end for our device communication. All our units, our, our new device devices are connected to Thingworks. And Thingworks get, gather the data from the devices in the field. And on Thingworks, we have the, the capability to visualize the data for our technicians or share the data with other systems like um, ERP systems, CRM systems, whatever. So um, Thingworks is really our, let's say, IoT core um, used to share the data in our company. Marco, you and I have spoken about cybersecurity and the way you need to assure your devices are secure and meet the test of the IT organizations. You also have a requirement for compliance with all kinds of regulations internationally since yeah. your products are distributed so broadly. What Do you play a role in compliance for the company? Compliance hits us on different levels. Uh, the basic level is really the, the level of tracking. So around the globe, the whole tracking of software changes is a key element. Um, like I mentioned uh, a few times already, tracking is required for the FDA, for the MDR markets, um, more or less really around the globe. And that's one, one element. The whole connectivity helps us to ensure we can track changes, the software changes to the unit. That's one piece. Then we have the cybersecurity compliance. Um, the cybersecurity compliance comes more or less together with, with the connectivity. So by supporting one, one scenario, the tracking, we open up another topic. And the cybersecurity has a lot of requirements when it comes down to the hardening of the system and to the to the managing of the data in the cloud. And with, with the solution we have in place, place with ThingWorks in a, in a certified environment and with the uh, features we implemented in the products for the security, we are able to, to meet those, those requirements. And the third point is the whole um, GDPR topic. And in the GDPR topic, we more or less avoid huge discussions by really separating the patient data, and the private data from the machine data. Our goal is to focus on the machine data, really make sure that we, we only collect machine data and transfer them to the cloud. So it's much easier for us to to handle the whole um, scenarios around the globe 
with all patient data, you don't run into challenges with uh, local hosting of data in the different regions. You really have the chance to have a global central hosting for your IoT server. And so we have a chance to start easily. And in the future, we may see changes there. But for today, this is the, the way how we handle this, this uh, GDPR compliance topics. So look and into your crystal ball for a minute. You mentioned the future. What do you expect the future will hold for providers, for suppliers like you, and for patients like me? I, I can see that in the future, we, we will see more and more connectivity. The connectivity in the OR, in the medical environment, is, is an, a, a change that will not stop. We can see that, or we saw already the changes in, in other industry industries and more or less other industries are leading. Medical is always five years behind, but the, the distance becomes shorter and shorter. And the things we saw in other environments is something we, we also can sooner or later expect in the medical environment. With a better connectivity of our devices and um, to the cloud and in the OR, the connectivity, uh, we can increase the performance of the OR. We can reduce human the human factor in the OR. And we also can reduce the human factor for the maintenance of the units, making or enable our customers to really, really focus on the core of their work. And the core of their work is to ensure that we have great patient out outcome and that the biomats, the, the IT, um, can provide a full, full and secure service that the units are available as needed, and the the whole environment is secure. So I can see a lot of, of uh, uh, let's say, data exchange and interaction on a digital layer, more than we see today. Well, it's clear that uh, your customers are, have a duty to provide outstanding medical care, but they are also running as businesses that have to operate with operational efficiency and effectiveness with safety. And data is only getting larger and larger for them. And the importance of your over-the-air connectivity and the ability to service these devices remotely is essential both for safety and operational excellence. I just want to thank you for the innovation that Carl Stortz has been provided for 75 years and the innovation you and your team are bringing to delivering remote service that will make those ORs even more effective for us patients. Congratulations, Marco, and thank you for being on Speaking of Service. Thank you, and it, it's always a pleasure to talk about service because service is, a, is my passion. I, I love service. We at Carl Stotz love to provide service and love to provide better services for our products in the future. So not only having an outstanding patient result, also provide an outstanding result for the maintenance and support of our products. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Speaking of Service podcast brought to you by PTC. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave a rating or review. And be sure to check out other episodes to hear new perspectives on improving life for aftermarket professionals, service teams, and the customers they support. If you have a topic of interest or want to provide feedback, email us at speakingofservice at ptc.com or visit us at ptc.com slash speakingofservice.